Brick by brick this city was built. Welcome to Board Games with Takras, that is me. Today I will talk to you about uh, Kampen om Fadigstein, or in English, the battle for Fadigstein. This is a battle between Sweden and Norway, between these numbers here, 1675 and 1719. Uh, it's a game by Christian Amundsen Asbjörn, among other people. So, let's uh, check out this title. It's a very neat box, almost artistic to hang on the wall. So, is the game just as artistic, or is there something more to it? Let's check it out. So, what do you get in the box? Well, you get the board, of course. And this is, has a beautiful artistic uh, rendi rendition of the fortress, you see. Uh, well, the entire board is the fortress, and we have some small walls here. This is one wall, and the blue wall here, and red wall, and a green wall. In addition, we have some small fortresses, towers, around here, which may aid you in the, the, the combat against the Swedes. You get these uh, event cards, which uh, also serves as a uh, round counter. Uh, start cards for each player, and of course the first player counter. And the three decks here, which uh, will give you new buildings or armies. Well, the goal of the game is, of course, to get more victory points. And you do this by adding this counter up here. Also, you have this token here, which uh, shows you the, your military ranking, as per now. But uh, one of the most important things here is to actually build on the wall. You see there are small pieces here, which allows you to place a brick. And each piece will give you a reward, which is printed inside the, the squares here. The game lasts for 9 rounds, so I've uh, drawn uh, 3 random cards from the A deck, and 3 from B, and 3 from C. After these 9 rounds are done, we'll get to the final war, and the game is over. So each player represents a family, which will help provide for the war. And the red player is Asak Hubudgo, which is the main farm, kind of. And each player will start with their own uh, starting buildings, like this uh, Junko Sar, which is more like a, a lumber yard, or this is a mill. Also, the black player has the same, it's a different name, of course, Id Hovudgo, and the same starting resources, but different names, just for, to add to the theme. So, a game round is very simple. Uh, each player rolls the dice simultaneously. So, of course, I can't do that now because I'm only one player. Let's well, see it. So, I'll just roll the di red, red die first. So, I have three throws, just like in Yahtzee. And uh, now I can use the result I have to delegate on the cards and resources that I do have now. So I have two fives, which can give me two soldiers. But the problem with this, if I roll more fives later, I can't use it again, because it's locked. And, and I have two twos. So each two dime will now give me, let's see here, uh, one gold and one hammer for each die. So I can do this. I will of course lock this card for later throws, but I think it's okay. So let's uh, roll again. I can of course use more dice if I want to on the other places, but I will lock it. So I'm hoping for better results. Oh. Okay, so now I have two more twos. I cannot do this because the twos are locked on this card. Now I can use this to get coins, or I can use the five or the four. But okay, I have one more throw. I feel lucky, right? Let's see. Oh, okay. Well, I get the one at least. So I can use this here to get two coins. And I have two threes, so I get, can get two hammers or I can get a soldier. So I'll choose the hammers for now. So after my turn, I'll get the money here. So for each dice on this uh, card, I'll get two money. So four and five here. So I just one, two, three, four, five. And one hammer extra. So now I can buy stuff or build stuff. First, I may choose to build on the wall, but I only have one hammer, and the walls here require at least four and three for this one, but one doesn't get me anywhere. Afterwards, I can purchase a new building, or I can sacrifice or, well, give support of the army. These cards have a price, seven, three, and five. Well, I have four money, so I can buy this one for three. And I'll just add it to my, to my home. So now I have five dice as well. This is very helpful because it allows me to use more dice, I have more options, and I got more hammers. But uh, what happens now? 
I have five buildings and I want to buy this one. Well, I have to replace one building. Okay, so I have one, two, five, six, and a one. So I have two separate spaces to add the ones, which is okay, but yeah, this one is more for me than this one. I don't need a soldier. However, this one gives me one Witcher point at the end of the game. That's no problem. Okay, I can add this anywhere. Just remove the current card. So let's just say I remove this one and place this here. I can take this card and just shove it under my playing board and I get the victory point later. I don't get the building, but the victory points. Very important. So now I have three instead of two ones. So now one, two, three, five, six. Very good. So the game is quite easy to learn and uh, it's very easy to roll die. And most people have played Yahtzee, so they know the three uh, throw rule. But uh, there is one more thing and that's the events. The events can be very helpful or they could be very punishing. So, this text is clearly in Norwegian, but it's no problem, because this is open information by everyone, and you can just um, find out the, the matching card for this one in the English. And, well, basically, uh, this symbols here will tell you what you get anyway. The top text here is just flavor text. It tells you about the history and uh, stuff that happens around this area. And yeah, that's quite interesting. So if you really want that, you should have it and have one person to read it. But anyway, this one, each player can uh, spend five hammers this round. Each hammer will give you one victory point. So five hammers and well, it's kind of self-explanatory. This is one card that's very beneficial. So you can, instead of building the wall, you can actually use it on this card instead and get victory points directly. However, there are sometimes the ships will attack and the buildings with the anchors will usually suffer for this one. So there, there are different cards here and you never know what you're going to get because you shuffle each, each of the decks and draw three from each deck randomly. So a lot of stuff can happen and that's kind of interesting and makes it a family game because there is a little bit of randomness. Well, this dice of course, but the events also adds up to the randomness which is kind of nice actually because History is never uh, predictable. So there are always four cards to purchase from. And can you purchase a new building or I can use this to give my support with my army. However, if I don't buy any cards, one card will always go away. This is the right one, rightmost one, and these will just shove to the right, shuffle or whatever. But sometimes other stuff happens, like war. Okay, so now we have to compare the soldiers. So we'll look here and see the soldier track. So, the one person who contributed the most, black, will get two points. And the one who contributed the least will get minus two points. Also, very interesting, you see, the more armies you have, the more um, upkeep you have. So after a war, this one will go back two spaces. One, two. And this one will go back three spaces. One, two, three. So this way, the one in the lead will get pushed back the furthest, and the one in the back will get pushed back just a little. And after the final event card is played, we get the final battle. So, the one with the most armies gets victory points, and the one with the least armies gets minus victory points. And the one who has the majority for each wall gets five victory points. So here, if black has uh, four here and red has three, black gets victory points. So, this is a way to score the game, and the battles are a way to score the game and finally you have the points for the buildings you own and then optionally you have the advanced rules so say you have these cards just like before and I want this card as well this is a, a five die card so I could just replace another card like this one or I can upgrade upgrade is very expensive you pay the price plus each card that will be the sum after the purchase so this is six seven and eight so you pay eight gold for this card and you add it here so that only the bottom icon is shown like here you have two icons so I do this or I'll do just do this so now each five will gain me one witcher point one coin and one hammer I could also choose to well not here but if this was a six I could go here but then I would lose the hammer symbol so that's up to me of course this one is very beneficial because there's nothing on the top symbol here so I just do this and I yeah, I have three icons now per die. This is, this is an optional rule, which I highly recommend, because it gives you more options. 
Well, that's uh, the battle for Farista. Well, I'm not going to kid you. This is a light game. It is a family game. Uh, and the dice are rolled just like Yatsi. You have three, three, three rolls. And you just delegate them as you wish. So the interesting part is uh, when do you delegate? Because there is a small sense of push or luck here because you, you do have to think about what you could get. Do you want the one die or the off chance that you might get two or three of the same number? That is highly valuable uh, if you get more. But of course, if you don't get anything, you have wasted it. So sometimes you might even get no die for a round because you wasted it on your luck. So I know this one guy who hates dice games and he pushes his luck to his limit and he gains no points at all because, well, he hates the game and I uh, don't like it and I'm going to push it just to win. But of course he doesn't win because it takes the game too seriously. It's a light game. Uh, the one thing I do have a problem with is the coloring of the board. The main board is very pretty. You see the castle and all the walls and buildings. It's very nice and artistically, but it's very, very small. Each square is just the size of this brick, and they're kind of a dark coloring. So you actually have to lean over to look at the board, find out which the wall is part of which uh, section, and see what you can get, because it's very, very tight, and it's very dark. So it has probably gone the more, uh, what's it called, just artistic way, rather than the uh, effective way. So I would like to have more bright colors or something to differentiate the walls with and the, the rewards you get. Also, these cars are kind of bland. Uh, they were very okay for what they do. You see clearly that the, the two die will give you two uh, money, but uh, I think it's a bit bland, uh, the brown hair. Of course, it's thematic because it's bricks and a wall and fortresses and all that, but the, it fails a bit when it comes to uh, what's it called readability, but after that uh, the game itself is very fine. It, um, it plays, <laughs> it can play quickly and can play slowly depending on who you're playing with because everyone rolls at the same time. Let's Let's see see but sometimes you get one roll and says, "Oh, this is actually a very good roll, but I just need one more. Or should I do this and that and start thinking too much and?" Yeah, it could go like that, actually. So, if you play with a light group who takes the game as a light game, it will go very fast and you have an enjoyable time. But if you play with gamers, they will probably game the system too much and think too much. Because, well, you all die and you get what you get. You can't uh, strategy, use strategy to think ahead what you roll you're going to get, because that doesn't work. It's random. But I like the game. It's a nice game for uh, well many ages, and uh, it has a nice history as well. Because I have no idea about uh, Farista until this game actually, and I'm from Norway, so I should know. But uh, yeah, it's nice to have the history text and the flavor text uh, on the cards, so I get a bit of an insight to to what's what happened on the east eastern part of Norway. So that's the uh, company for Farista. I hope you enjoyed this video and. Uh, I hope also I will help you to either go for this game or not. It's kind of up to you. So, uh, this is a board game with the Takras in English. Usually I do Norwegian reviews, so <laughs> there will probably be a while till next time unless we get a new Norwegian game, which I like to promote. So, uh, thanks for that, and uh, we'll see you later.